We're live into the Leverage community. Welcome, everybody. Today, I've got a moderator of the community, of the group, who's also a coach. And he also has some experience with leverage since he is a Tom Ferry coach and he has used a VA. We want to kind of interview Roman Ivanov so that we better understand who he is and what he's done over the last few years. Welcome, Roman. How are you, buddy? Oh, I'm great, Tristan. It's nice to be on your webinar, and I'm excited to share my knowledge with um, VAs and leveraging your time in order to grow your business. I love it. Well, look, let's start. Let's start with your a little bit of your history first. How did you get into coaching? Because you're you're part of the Tom Ferry organization. And how did you end up there? Tell me about that. Well, that was my passion for years. I've been in coaching myself and coaching helped to grow my business term- tremendously. It was, um, it was a steep rise from day one I stepped in. And when I grow my business to the point I have enough money I have all the tools and systems in place. And I started thinking about what am I want to do to make my feel good, to be something to share, to be the source of information, to be a source of knowledge to others. And that's why I said it's my passion to be a coach, not just because I want to make money that way. It's just because I want to dedicate my life to that. I love that, man. So before you were coaching, were you doing real estate? Tell me your history there. Yes, I've been selling real estate for about 10 years now. Um, I went from a single uh, agent to, uh, to a team and I've hired virtual assistant myself. Uh, it helped my business as an agent a lot. Uh, especially in in form of getting my time back and and putting my time where uh, where the money are, uh, dedicating ten dollar an hour job to the person who's doing the ten dollar an hour job and focus yeah. on, on the tasks that makes me make three thousand dollars an hour. That's that's the power of leverage, in my opinion. I love that, man. Very very good. What area are you out of? Where do you live right now? I'm in Miami. Oh, nice. Dude, I love that. Very, very good market. It's a hot market right now. It's hot market in Florida. And oh, hot Florida. Florida. <laughs> I love it. I love it here. That's awesome, man. All right, let's talk a little bit about leverage. You mentioned to me that you used a virtual assistant before in the past, and, and you're heading back into that, that world again. What did you use them for specifically? What were you using them? use them to help me uh, with my prospecting. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, prospecting. And when I was a full-time agent, I had what we call in Tom Ferry community out of power, which, which is one hour of dedicated time in your day to make your phone calls. Well, at some point I realized if I so successful spending one hour a day making these phone calls, what if I would outsource uh, that task to someone who can do it for me and also do that hour of power myself? Now we're having two hours of power in one hour. And that worked just fine. It worked, it worked beautifully. Um, my assistants had me appointments and I spent time on following up. So I don't have to uh, dedicate time for setting appointments while I, I can dedicate uh, following up and building a relationship. So that would help in my business tremendously when I outsource that part, business just doubled. It's, it's, it's like an, another Roman sitting behind the computer somewhere overseas and saying exactly what I say, because I have to coach my assistant to say what I say and handle objections the way I would 
So we kind of uh, coming up with the same style to prospect. Does it make sense? Dude, it totally does. I want to dig a little deeper into that because a lot of a lot of business owners, they hire a VA, but they don't do the training. And, and look, regardless of what company you hire from, and some of them will be trained, some of them won't, but it's still going to be your job to train them how you want them to work for your organization. So in this case, Roman, what did you focus on for training? Like, how did that look like for you when you were training your VA? And how, would, how are you going to do it differently this time? Well, uh, training um, for the prospecting would be a little different compared to training for, let's say, marketing. Uh, when I hire a, a VA for prospecting, I'm looking for the same uh, vocabulary that I use. So it will be transferred to me when I come up to an appointment. So mm -hmm. it's a little closer training uh, when uh, you hire someone for prospecting. I want that. VA to be extension of me. I want I want to have the same personality, the social style. I mm -hmm. want I, I want I want to be an extension. Okay. Compa compared to hiring a VA as um, as assistant for marketing, I wouldn't want to have an extension for me. I want to have someone who would know even more than I do in terms of editing, in terms of um, social media in terms of accountability, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, in, in posting, because I'm guilty. Sometimes I don't post uh, on the time blocks that I, I, I propose to post. Mm -hmm. But if, if I dedicate that task to a VA, it, 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 it can be done on a certain day, certain time, regardless, because yeah. they, they have it in their schedule. They don't have um, an extra coaching session reschedule, but they, they can definitely help me with this task. So when I hire and train VA for that part, that would be a different style of hiring. If, if I would say, I, I want to have a VA to take care of my pro social profiles and um, my ed video editing or, so, or even uh, social media editing, I would want to have um, a person who's right on the task Mm -hmm. uh, I would say analytical type of person who would not miss a day at time, not, not so much expressive, uh, but also a data driven and very techy person. I like that. All right. So you're looking for that. So this is your next round now of hiring a VA. So let's fast forward to right now. Now you're, you're going to be hiring one. What are you looking for character wise? Because you mentioned you want somebody that's similar to you, right? That can that can engage right. with people the same way. What are some of those things that you're looking for in your next VA? In my next VA, I'm looking for more task dedicated person uh, rather than the personality that would be extension of me. Because I'm no longer actively selling real estate. I sell real estate, but it's it's not my priority. Coaching is my full-time job that I have. So um, moving from making prospecting calls to uh, hiring VA who are going to run the ads for me or who are going to take care of my social media profiles, edit the videos, that would be the person who I would mm -hmm. hire to help me with, help me with taking notes and, and uh, running scripts. Someone who would be smarter than me in, on a certain level that, that I would outsource that instead of learning. I, I hear this a lot from my coaching clients. I don't want to learn certain things. I want to just outsource it and let them do it. I, I, I'm looking for a similar thing. I want to outsource things that I don't want to learn how to do. I know what to do, my things, and I don't have time to learn how to be great at video editing and uh, picture editing and so forth. I would rather let someone do it who can do it professionally. I love that. All right. So what are you hearing some of the people that you're coaching saying about hiring a VA? What, what are you seeing pain points that they're looking to fill from hiring a VA, like from Virtue Desk? Absolutely. Well, and that, that topic 
brought up, if not on every coaching session, <laughs> every other coaching <laughs> session. I would imagine it's a popular topic. It is because outsourcing, it's um, it's it will fit all eight levels of business. Either you if you're a new agent or if you're retiring agent who already have all the systems in place, you still building and, and running your business, either um, you're gonna uh, have issues with prospecting and that, that's how I got help from VA. And that, that this would be on the lower levels, even up to the mid level of um, business, even in, in the higher uh, level of business, when you um, have, have all the systems in place, delegating certain tasks to a VA would be extremely beneficial. And they, they, they struggle with time. Everyone struggles with time and how to use their time to the best of their uh, business. Mm -hmm. I would say planning and budgeting is a lot more effective use of your time rather than editing pictures. Got it. Got it. So you get a lot of people coming in saying, hey, we want we, we need a VA to help us allocate a lot more of our time wisely. Right. All right. And what are you recommending right now? Look, now put on your coach hat. What do you recommend people where people start with when it comes to let's say they do want to hire a VA. Right. Do you look for them to hire uh, do you say, hey, you should hire more of a social media editor VA? Or do you say, well, hold on, most of your business is coming from past clients or your sphere. Maybe you should hire one that calls your database. Where do you start? Well, start again with planning and see what is your budget first. Are you ready to fit VA in your budget? Are you um, planning for the next year for 2022 because it's not it's not a magic pill that just you hire a VA and everything goes um, with, with, without any issues with budget in other words you need you need to start thinking we I, I have that plan in place and I'm gonna delegate um, certain tasks to VA and I have gonna have certain uh, income coming in Second, I would recommend uh, start the onboarding session with VA. So I, from my experience, um, hiring the right person is the key for uh, this business. If you hire in the A that's not good fit, it's not gonna go anywhere. No. You have to have, you have to click that um, emotional lock. So you both work nicely with each other you're supposed to like your VA <laughs> I hope right? so right that's so right? true what a great point <laughs> that's a great point buddy uh right. wait do you find that some people don't like their VA or what happens there what I found that people hire VA and they looking at them not as real humans they're looking at them as a machine uh, that, that 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 just they get in from it's important to Greed and and um, influence your VA on a certain level because he's he's a human being somewhere overseas and he's supposed to like you as well. He's yeah. supposed to you're supposed to have that connection. That's why I'm saying lock supposed to be on both sides. The VA is supposed to like you too, and you're supposed to be kind and nice to him. And when when that lock clicks, that's where where the good things start happening. That's so true. What a, what a great point, man. A lot of people just forget that the VA and Pavel and I always, always say, Hey, look, remember that this, it's a real person. So treat them with, with kindness and, and respect, right? Mutual respect. I love that. What do you find is the number one reason people, in this case, the people you're coaching fail when using either staff when they hire local staff or when they hire a VA? What do you think the number one reason is? Well, first, when they like local staff, um, they, they, they have this 
um, challenge with people come and go. They don't have consistency there. When with VA, when they hire VA, they, they hire one company and they, they know that this VA is gonna be with them for years to come. That's, that's the biggest challenge they, they have with um, hiring locals. Um, also, what I can say, they, 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 they worried about making the first step. That's another challenge. It's, it's always a big uh, mental and emotional decision uh, that you take in um, responsibility for another person. Not, just emotionally, not everyone prepared for it. it it's, it's a new relationship. You're supposed to pay the salary every month to this VA, and you're supposed to manage a VA, and you're supposed to build relationship with someone behind, uh, stand, standing behind you, and you're staying on the top, and, and, and um, get, getting that new skill and stepping up from being a single agent to uh, being an agent with assistant, it's emotionally difficult. Yeah, that's very true. I see that. And you know what? Since you're you're a coach and you do this for a living at a high level, Roman, first, thanks for being on again. If any of you on here have any questions on Facebook or, or in the webinar, just throw them on here and ask ask Roman. This guy does it for a living. He's now a moderator in the community. So let's let's use his skills while we have them, right, Roman? So thanks for being on. So, dude, on that. What are you what are you excited about for for next year in general when it comes to real estate? Because you're coaching a lot of people. What are you finding that is a is a great opportunity that excites you and saying, hey, you know what? More real estate agents should be doing this next year, or they should be focused on this. Anything pop up? You're probably talking to moderator uh, who's uh checking on comments all right or should yeah, I, I got it no i uh i was talking to uh, on the other end but question for you roman right what are you most excited about next year that you think is an opportunity for for real estate agents or just for any business owner well i'm looking into 2022 with a lot of excitement uh, the economy is great right now uh, real estate particularly booming and with the right tools and the right systems, uh, agents can grow their business just tremendously. Being on the listing side and controlling the, the market in 2022, that would be the key. With, with, with such a high demand, I see prices for lead generation even going down a little because everyone wants to become the listing agent and if uh the right tools and play in the systems in place for the agents in 2022 and from what i see the economy going to continue growing at the same pace everyone in real estate going to have opportunity to take the cut of the of this cake that's true. I mean, the stats are showing that we're going to have more sales. So the economists are saying more sales in 2022, right? We had over 6 million homes closing. They're, they're estimated to even have way more in the coming year. I mean, it's more inventory is going to pop up. We're going to have the same demand. So we're looking at another great year for real estate. And he's right. Pay attention to what he's saying. He says, we need the right tools, right? And we need the right systems and processes, on that. So Roman, great. So now you're looking at a single agent. Let's let's talk single agent or or brand newer agent. What do you typically recommend for somebody like that just starting off? What would you say, hey, you know what, let's get this in order first? What does that look like? Well, if it's a brand new agent and if we're talking about relationship with the VA, they they need to see where, we, where are they standing in terms of their system first? I would, I would say set the systems for yourself in your business and then add the VA. Because like I, I mentioned earlier, VA is not 
just plug and play. It's, it's, it's a part of the business. It's a business expense on the other hand. So it's a great tool if you know how to use it. If let's say if you have a drill and you don't know how to screw uh, the screw in the wall, well, the drill is just an expense. Same, same, same with a newer agents. Get into coaching, set these systems in place ASAP. It can be done very quickly with the right coaching. And then when you have, when, when you have um, budget in place, when you know what to say, when you know how to um, structure your day, then you can hire an agent and have that time spent for you. Uh, in, in I also, I, I want to add, when uh, people hire um, VA for prospecting, what I started, it's mm -hmm. very easy to sleep off the path that, well, someone's doing that work for me, and mm -hmm. now I'm going to go get pina colada and chill on the beach, right? Especially in, in Miami. In, Florida. <laughs> in Miami. <laughs> yeah. When, when in real life, we're supposed to not just outsource it, but use that time to the best benefit. Because if we just outsource it, that's not going to take our business to the next level. We're going to mm -hmm. use that time for the purpose of growing the business. Very true, buddy. Very true. All right. Let's go uh, lightning round. I never do this, but I have some questions for you. We'll go really fast. Maybe like three or four. Okay. All right. Since we're at the end here. Sure. What is your favorite app for your phone? My favorite Instagram. Oh, nice. I didn't expect you to say that. I like that. Uh, now I have to follow you on Instagram. <laughs> what's your What's your handle? What's your name on Instagram? Is it just your name? Coach, no, Coach Roman Ivanov. Perfect. We'll follow you. Follow, right. follow Roman. All right. Okay. Next question. What's your favorite food? Favorite food? Anything my wife's cook. <laughs> oh, what a good answer. You got points from your wife now. <laughs> I love that. Uh, what would you say is one of your favorite books out there that you've read that you would recommend? Say, hey, read this one. It's really good. I think most of the people already read that, but I think the most powerful book I've ever read is Dale Carnegie, uh, How to um, Make Friends and Influence People. That's a great book. I love rereading that. It's so simple and deep at the same time. So really good recommendation. All right. What about favorite podcast? Do you listen to podcasts? Yes, I, I love podcasts. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to be too salesy, but I would say Tom Ferry podcast is. It's pretty a good podcast. It's a good podcast. <laughs> what can you say? It's a, it's a good podcast, buddy. All right, yeah. uh, last question for you. What's the last great show that you watched? Show, just for fun. Um, I really love Shameless. Uh, I know if it's a show, it's it's more like a movie, but yeah, yeah. no, it's a show. It's a show. It's a show. It's a show. It's a yeah, show. It's a show. Yeah. yeah, it was. Fun. I thought you were going to say Squid Game, but I'm glad you said Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Well, thank you so much, Roman. How do people get a hold of you? Is it through Instagram if they have questions? Yes, Instagram, Coach Roman Ivanov. That would be the best way to reach out to me. Also, my email r ivanov at your coach. Um, I'm uh, very responsive to all the emails. I'm trying to respond every half an hour between coaching sessions. <laughs> I love that, man. I love that. Well, thank you for being on. Thank you for jumping into the community and helping us out. We really appreciate you, man. All right. It was a great pleasure. Thank you so much, buddy. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody.